Okay, we've shown a lot of cave art on this channel and uh, different civilizations at different places. And a lot of people are familiar with La Cove Cave where it shows all of the animals and lined up and it looks symmetrical and correct and even French painters and things visited and said we, we've done nothing because these people are drawing animals so well. But what seems to be lacking from the record there is them drawing people larger and really becoming sentient to the point and doing it to themselves and putting themselves into that picture. Although there's a 40,000 year old statue of a man that's head is a lion showing animism, we don't really see too many places where there's an art until the Neolithic age where something looks correct and not like something that's just childlike art as far as the people go. The people usually are drawn slightly thicker than a stick man somewhat but usually drawn somewhat small five, six, eight inches tall at the most, and a lot of times smaller. And because they're drawn so small, just like you would as a kid drawing on paper, are pretty much drawn as stick men. But there aren't any big people showing up in cave art. It's real rare. So while we've seen a bunch of different cave art at different places, and I kind of laid off of it for a while because I made like, what, eight, nine videos in a, in a series there, and well two different parts but irregardless I felt like it was pushing on it a little much but hey every once in a while when people get on my older video and ask a question that spurns me back into it again and somebody asked the question why don't they have any cave art that shows a people a face anything that looks realistic in any way in any of these cave arts whenever they draw the animals so well well, I'll tell you something that's personal to me. I'm a pretty decent artist, but whenever I was a kid, I could draw horses and things real well. In fact, still to this day, even though I don't have any practice in it at all, I can draw a horse in perspective, turning his head and doing things real well. I can turn into a unicorn, turn it into a pegasus, stuff like that. I can draw a lot of animals and any basic picture I can draw. But whenever I try to draw a person's face, it doesn't come out too good. I just want to kind of scratch it out. If you look at this picture over here on the right, it's done pretty darn good. But it's a little scratched out. One wonders if the artist is the one that scratched it out or if someone later mad at the people that were the artists scratched it out or people that came and saw it and freaked out didn't understand what they were seeing who knows what but there are some artistic representations anything that would have been outdoors would have been long eroded away but in special conditions and in a cave which is an odd place for them to do this type of work for they had to carry torches in and so you can imagine some great painter in old Leonardo da Vinci and then you say well he did it by candlelight and you go wow okay well these people by torchlight it's called La Marcha cave it's in the Magdalena era Magdalenian cave art in the lithic age before Neolithic what very recently ago was considered to be prehistoric type people but the more we get and the more things that we find like Gobekli Tepe which dates to 10,000 years ago we're starting to see that there was a whole lot more going on before Egypt before Sumeria that was before that before other places in fact we've seen Katalhoyuk and all of these other places come to light and show you a lot. Catalhoyuk, I wish you'd look at my video on it that I did right at Christmas. In fact, I did it right at the solstice 
I believe it was the 19th when I did it, put it out on the 21st, but it shows that back then they had a lot of connections that led through to the modern time that we have today, but it begins by showing you these adobe houses and things that they had that look quite modern. If someone was to say this was something that they had at two, three thousand years ago, just around then, you would agree with it, but whenever they tell you it's nine thousand years ago, it all of a sudden hits the mark there of what it's trying to get at. And it doesn't look like they're just coming up with the idea. It's got burials below the floor and everything. But also, whenever the guy gives the presentation, which I keep cutting into like I do, it, keeps, it shows where this bow tie is on these people that looks like leopard skin somehow. And they correlated along with other people to eventually the people that come in Egypt with that same symbology. And so we can carry things back. And that's what I try to do is make connections. And with that one, it makes a very distant connection. And here we were able to make one some 15,000 years ago. The cave loaded at La Marche in French was discovered in 1937 by Leon Piricard, a French amateur scientist, and Stain Wolf, a paleontologist. They spent five years excavating the cave and found more than 1,500 pieces of slate with painted carvings on them. These images are very difficult to understand. Sometimes several objects in the drawings would overlap each other. Nevertheless, in the eyes of archaeologists, these drawings carry special meaning. In the Lamarche Cave, you can find paintings of lions, bears, antelope, horses, and 155 vivid human portraits dating from around 15,000 years ago, a time before the rise of the great civilizations that anybody heard of, and a time when Europe was firmly in the grip of an ice age still, which ended about the Younger Dryas event and Gobekli Tepe, and we come from there. But we don't all come from Gobekli Tepe, but in timeline, there are things that we can look at. La Marche Cave. When French scientist Pichard excavated La Marche between 1937 and 1942, he cataloged over 1,500 slabs of limestone that had been carefully placed in the floor on the floor. In addition, many of the engravings show people wearing hats at this time, robes and boots. Although this does not coincide with the previously accepted view of prehistoric people, it may be because paintings depicting other clothed humans were destroyed in the other caves while scientists were studying the walls. In Laco, for example, the floor was obliterated to make way for visitors in the 1950s. There's no way of knowing if anything significant was destroyed, and if it was, you would never know about it. If there was something on the wall that didn't fit their symbology and what they wanted to display, they could easily make that go away real quick. Picard originally found 69 human figurines in the caves. There were 49 etchings of heads alone and 18 with the whole body. Altogether, there were 50 etchings of females, 12 of males, and five of that were indeterminate gender. Eventually, 155 human figurines were found in all. The walls of the cave were not decorated, though, in any way other than this depiction. So, well, they say like that, but then there was animals and there was things like that, which we normally would just find that. And if we found a few stick people, they'd go crazy about it. This is usually the the modus right but here we have something that's quite radically different not too many thousands of years different from other sites that we've seen but someone's taking the time to do this let me zoom in and back out for this where we're gonna look at these guys it's a little bit closer so you can see human phenotypes definitely and they're all a little different and you can see that if somebody could half-ass draw Probably better than me now, even, and probably a lot of people listening right now. Human faces, they'd come out to something like this. Now this, now let me use my finger. Now this third one over, it goes a little slopey on his nose and does these things. 
and you can tell right here they must have chipped in the rock and da 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 because this is scratched into limestone so not only are you able to take a pencil and smoothly draw what you want but you're having to do it in limestone so you can get this effect but I'm guaranteeing you that these people that were in the cave at the time probably could recognize these guys and you'll see more and more pictures that will show you that effect although there are some that seem to be very animistic like this who almost seems a dog faced a little bit or lion faced a little bit the prognostum of the snout coming out and this one here looking very baboonish compared to all the rest of the people who look normal and long haired women that you see like the one on the left here right before the baboon but then this guy here that looks like some Greekish interpretation and he's only got hair left around in a ring and going bald and you can tell that and he's got a schnoz on him and a beard and he almost looks like one of the dwarves the seven dwarves doesn't he well, well we'll see something else that goes with that just a little bit later let's continue so some of these are a little bit sketchy and scratchy and all kinda meh and guys with this gothy type hair all hanging down and it's not kept but you can see these aren't huge hairdos and you have Ben Franklin here and you have another guy here with a little beard that's come poking out onto it too and it shows his hair around on him then you get this other one right here and I don't know man to me that looks like a guppy man or something it looks creatures out of the back lagoon I don't know they didn't pull that one off too well did they neither did they this one here and there almost seems to be some scribbling and words across it but I bet that's just cross etching and wishful thinking but then you see this old lady or old man kind of a little grumpy big got a big nose and tight little lips and he's all gonna twist off there a little bit kinda looks like Walter and the guy that's got the hand puppets and stuff you know what I'm talking about from Vegas whereas this one seems like it's made out of a cloud that has a face on it and the neck's not attached right or maybe that's just supposed to be the hair going down the back if you think of it that way that's a pretty good side representation of a girl yeah it does look pretty good then we have this old lady or crone here but it looks like she's wearing a hat and then you have another guy here that seems to be shave headed or is that a baby I think it might be for there's one that looks like that in the groups that I've seen that looks like a baby in fact you can kind of tell it is here's another guy with shaggy hair could be a girl so I guess they were saying ambiguous to some of them and everything but then others you can kind of tell like so then this guy here looks a little scruff and you can see the character drawn in that and the characterisms again I tell you some of these guys could probably tell you well that's that's Jim or that's Ugg see yeah that's yeah everybody knows Ugg so these pictures that they've got let me zoom back out just a little bit well I gotta keep it in for these here's that same last one that we were looking at and I don't know if it's supposed to be hair or if that crack they maybe shouldn't have drawn because it's just a crack in there or did it look like it was drawn in there like they were trying to draw his hairline in some way but here we have the curl of the ear and everything doubled around the eyes not showing an eyelid in this version here doing it and so there might be a few artists involved that very much looks like there is but then again this is interpretation of other people but you can kind of tell this was scribbled by somebody very unlike this that looks very cartoonish but you see that Phrygian cap and if you take that Phrygian cap and you put it on the guy up above that looked like a dwarf now it really looks like the dwarves because they had that little flopped over Phrygian cap but this predates the Phrygians quite a bit but also I've shown you that that cap predates what we call the Phrygians by quite some bit here's another picture and you can see the eyelids and everything drawn on this what could be a girl with a bound up hairdo that's something kind of like the Lady of Elche or Princess Leia perhaps so 
The official report from the French Prehistoric Society states that the findings at La Marche are completely authentic. They've gone over and over it again. I think it's like six times they've gone over this situation. And while there looks like some kind of flame or the ear to a donkey or something that's down here, and a scratching over the top of this that is a bird. If you'll look, here's a bird's beak, there's the bird's eye, here's the bird in his body, his claws go up, and then there's his wing and his wings. But that's over the top of, and maybe that's a symbology too, of this man that's here. But it tells you in the statement, some of the, some of the engravings show people wearing boots, hats, belts, and what appears to be clothing. And we know people that were wearing Celts a lot of stuff and everything, but we've, we're assured of where humanity believes that these pants and boots came from boots and pants and boots and pants and so hmm kind of strange there a little extra and especially whenever these are all dated and then they say the scratching over them was of course done after the fact because the scratching's done over the picture but the scratching still dates extremely you know like patina and all those things that go with the testing for it Certain findings at La Marche have led the greater debate over the origin and development of writing systems even. In particular, an engraved reindeer antler from La Marche has provided proof that more sophisticated systems of symbols existed during the Paleolithic era period than people once believed. Francesco de Erico, an archaeologist who analyzed the antler, sees it as proof that humans at this time had artificial memory systems which enabled them to record various groupings of information and so this would have been the first keepings of some type of records in language although it isn't words and making up letters phonetically like we're looking at right now on the page the very first of writings were done with scratches and people knew what the hell that meant Kind of like we do one, two, three, four, five, and across it, and so on. Just subtle bends, and one being shorter than others, and so on, gave vowels and consonants. It was very simplistic, but that led to better and more and better and more, and a more defined thing that actually ended up being little pictures, like these people's faces for a head, and a hand for a hand, and a foot for a foot, but those turned into cuneiform writings, if you've ever looked into it. And then from those, they developed the modern, more realistic form of cuneiform that's out of it. But cuneiform is something that's a lot different than hieroglyphics, which still use the pictures. And then our current way of doing it is not really a cuneiform, which is based on ideograms in the first place, or hieroglyphics but it's able to make simple letters with scratches and rocks and due to the way the lines go here and the lines go there you know that that's a E and one less line is an F and a bend this way makes a D and so on. Additionally, Dr. Michael Rappengluck has noted pits arranged like certain constellations on the cave floor. One constellation on, Lamro on the La Marche floor is the Pleiades. Hmm, funny how that keeps coming up. It's been from around, been found engraved on the walls of Neolithic caves, such as La Co Cave, where they show Taurus and it in its place right over its shoulders that we talked about. And the odd thing is that people figured out that if the walls were transparent but the picture was still there, at a certain time of night, you would pretty much be looking at it. They had it on the right wall and everything, and it selected that band going across there to do it and use that for a reason. So they're found in Neolithic caves, but then rarely are those found in the Paleolithic era. So this, again, takes this idea of archaeoastronomy and conceptives and hook up with the Pleiades and all this situation that people try to go off on as dating back much further, even older. 
Dr. Rappengluck has suggested that these pits might have been filled with animal fat and set on fire to replicate the stars in the sky. If so, Rappengluck ventures that this site could mark the origin of the candlelit festivals that are in the Far East that also celebrate the Pleiades, utilizing them in the same type of way. Funny how some of these things can go on for thousands and thousands of years. So let's look at another gallery of images. For now we see a guy with a, a toque on top of his head, if you're from Canada, eh? And it looks puffed up on the top of it, or it, there's that damn Phrygian cap again, actually. And that's a pretty decent artistic representation of somebody. Again, they probably would have been able to tell what that looks like. And this below, there again, that, that baby-looking thing, but then the other shows it's got an umbilical cord hooked to it, and it's very chubbed out and so on, and yes, that's a baby. <coughs> You know what's weird is in art, for a long time you can tell that they didn't know how to draw babies correctly it seemed. Even in Egypt they're just little people. A lot of art it's just people but they're a little smaller and they go well that must be little kids but that doesn't look like little kids. Whereas this does look like a baby with an umbilical cord and has kind of features that are more like a baby's than all the way up until the Renaissance, huh? So here's another picture, and you can see where it's dueled over, where they have these two people. In fact, quite a few of the images in there are two people, and they thought, well, maybe this is the male and female, and they're using for teaching and all this stuff, or initiation rites, who knows what they're doing. But in this picture here I'm on now, you can see two people there and two people here, but over the top of this one on the right you can see another person looking to the right here's its eye nose mouth facing to the right so things have been drawn over and on and on and there's scratches around on there and they can see they did some scratching but there was nothing other done than the scratching and what's that have to do with it then you see two people here and one of them got a headband on and part of the mouth seems to be missing here but it looks like they're either in the cave and there's the cave exit and they're looking out and you can see light out there or that's a sunset maybe this is a male and a female again sitting there in an embracive pose yeah, yeah well it, it it can get even more erotic than that surely but here we have that going close up for these last two here but like you said there's over 150 you see something like this scratched up and you don't even know what the hell you're looking at but what this is, is a Venus type lady, and she's sitting here with her legs out here. Here's one leg, here's another, or feet, feet. She is that heavy Venus type woman again. And here's a breast, and here's a breast leading up to her head. It's up here that somehow is chipped off. But over the top of it, it's got a few weird scratches, but then there's an outline that goes out about here and tucks over here and back across it and it looks like somebody tried to draw a dress on top of it. Over here next to it there appears to be almost a jug type of thing and then uh, something that looks like an ear of corn but it couldn't be corn but I don't know if that's a fruit or something or maybe it's just kind of a shape and it's one of those cloud things and you're hoping for it. Because right here there's extra scratches, one, two, three, that look like three big cartoon fingers pointing up like this way, like there. And that doesn't go with it at all either, like somebody's drawn over the top of it somewhat with another attempted drawing that we can't make out. Some of these people have taken light and gone back and forth, played with shadows, and can then make it out. And then they make tracings of each one, and there are lists of them. And I welcome you to look this up, but there's that Venus depiction too. And it's drawn in not just side relief, but twisted at you and everything. And then you can see the start of the head and the chin and the nose even, it seems. And she's kind of looking at you, but at an angle and cutting her eyes at you. So there's a lot of bit of perspective drawn in this. And you notice the face on art. You know, a lot of it's just straight from the side. 
We understand that if you tried to draw somebody, that would be the easiest way, but that wouldn't give you an idea what they look like. Be like, well, that's what he looks like from the left when he's looking far away, <laughs> you know? So here's another piece that's done on Slade, and uh, this apparently is one of the very first erotica that's been shown here, it seems. Uh, or one could make up the idea that the female here has lost her contact lens and she's looking for it real badly and he's stooped up behind her trying to help her look she seems in distress a little bit but also happy so maybe they found it and here's that weird scratch writing by the way that you can find it Camiana Mohila well I did a video on it two and a half three years ago hey I wonder if the wiki has been redone because if it has it probably deserves time for another video on that for that's 22,000 years ago and they have a lot of etchings and things done on it but they also had that scratch writing there and those guys that know what that linear writing is turned around and depicted it out and they said it mentions Inanna and Utu which are the very first Sumerian gods of the sun is Utu and and Anna is somebody that everybody knows real well. And on. But these are just syllable sounds that they've got and separated in here. Not tell me if it doesn't look like it to you, but there are a series of scratches and a gap in scratches. And then set down, gap, scratch, gap, scratch, gap, scratch, gap, scratch. This could end up meaning something. One would wonder if they deciphered it and you'd go, well, I deciphered it, but I can't tell you what it says because they're not looking for her contact lens. Again, a very interesting sight. And you look at all of these depictions, baby with umbilical cord, people with Phrygian caps on and stuff, eh? And things, and people have tried to look at that and they go, no, it's not like anything else. We have to discount it. Well, uh, Gobekli Tepe's not like anything else, and you can't discount it. They've tested this six times, I heard. I don't know, maybe somebody knows more than me. We'll chime in here with six different people from the starting people off of it, and everybody has come to the consensus that they're real. But then if you said, okay, so then what's the big deal about them? And then you send them pictures of what this stuff looks like, they go, oh, no, that's got to be fake, see? you'll instantly get a rejection on that. Why? Well, it looks like they're wearing boots and pants and shirts and hats and full clothing. And that really puts a wrench in the whole idea that we were trying to give people. Well, hey man, there's been a whole lot of wrenches put in that whole concept and idea here lately. And in fact, during my lifetime of study, I come to find out right whenever I went into it that they were trying to tell us that everybody went caveman at 3500 BC and the very first things that I checked into showed like no that's not necessarily so and then you found people with kid gloves and they felt like ashamed to be able to try to talk about it and things came out and you're like wow and they're like well what happened to that oh they fired that guy because he didn't fit their model well that just really sucks ass instead of the truth they really want to keep with this model. They really like that model. Well, it looks like the, some people modeled for these pictures right here. Oh, it's as good as a lot of people could draw. And if you thought, well, okay, you can draw pretty good on paper. Now you're going to scratch it on a cave wall. Here's a sharp rock. You'd be lucky to pull off depictions that look this good. But again, you look at some of these portraits that are in here, and I bet the people could recognize who that person was. And uh, one of the better ones is this one right over here. Probably think of him maybe as being an elder or a man of wisdom or something along that line. But wow, huh? A little bit different about cave art. And you know what? Bet they find a few more that are like this too. And then what if they found one that was over 25,000 years old? Would you ever hear about it? Like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what you think here. Peace.